When touchscreen technology first hit the mass market, the general opinion was that it was a fad that would pass much like any other, with many people clinging tightly to the analog buttons on their phones and claiming that things like texting could never be the same without them. But fast forward to today and it's practically impossible to find any of those previous skeptics who don't currently have their faces buried in a new touchscreen device, tapping and swiping away. But how did it all get started? Well, the first touchscreens were developed all the way back in the 1960s using a capacitive design, which works by coating glass with an electrically conductive surface. Now, as we all remember from the first Matrix film, human beings are basically just batteries waiting around to be harvested by the machine. So, whenever one of our conductive little digits comes in contact with this type of screen, the processor can sense the difference in charge as an input. And although this technology was developed decades ago, the same basic idea is used in even the highest end smartphones today. Cool, right? But just like anything else, these wonderful devices don't function well under certain adverse conditions. Condensation from cold, damp weather can get to your screen and get it wet, causing it to register random presses, and surface materials such as dirt or even the oil from your fingers can also impede a capacitive touchscreen's functionality. I mean, not to mention that they can't normally be used with a gloved hand. So, in cases where speed and sensitivity are not as important as reliability and functionality, resistive screens can be a better option. You'll often see these on kiosks, uh, cash registers, ATMs, and other places where durability really counts. So these operate by having two thin sheets set apart by a small gap, one of which has a current applied to it, while the other is connected to voltage sensors. Whenever the screen is touched, it causes the current and sensor layers to make contact, registering an input. Because the outer surface of the screen doesn't contain any sensitive electronics, resistive touchscreens stand up very well to environmental hazards and careless users, and can be used with styluses, gloves, and really any blunt object, though you won't see them very often in phones or tablets due to their bulk and lack of precision. Now, as great as current touchscreen technology is, I mean, are we ever going to see it do more than just allow us to pick stuff on a display? What if touchscreens could touch mm. you back? Mm. Well, researchers are now trying to answer that very question with a number of different approaches. For instance, the prototype Fusa 2 display from Japan is made of optical fibers, making it feel furry. And aside from making your dog jealous because you couldn't stop petting your new phone, it could have applications in interior design, marketing, I mean, imagine a football field made of these fibers that could change the appearance or, or detect exactly where the receiver's feet were when he fell out of bounds. Cool stuff, right? But it's not for everyone, and if you don't want your screen to feel like a puppy, there are a number of cool things in the works that can provide all sorts of tactile feedback. A project called Ultra Haptics out of England is launching a system that enables both touch inputs and feedback in mid-air using ultrasonic pulses. And Disney Disney Research is working on a similar system that uses precisely directed blown air for virtual reality experiences, gaming, and more. And speaking of Disney Research, they're also developing the Tesla Touch system, which uses minute changes in voltage on the touchscreen itself to actually make the screen mimic different gestures. I mean, imagine a picture of sandpaper feeling rough when you run your finger across it, or a large file feeling heavier than a small one when you drag it to a different folder. I mean, who knows, maybe one day you'll be able to feel tech quickie videos, though I'm not sure if anyone's gonna like that idea very much. But you know what's a good idea? Squarespace. Head over to squarespace.com if you need to build a website. They've got a wide variety of different templates, all of which will allow you to end up with a simple, powerful, beautiful, functional website. They've got 24-7 support via live chat and email, and it starts at only $8 a month with a free domain thrown in if you buy Squarespace for the year. All of their templates feature responsive design, so your website will scale to look great on any device, and and every website comes with a free online store. You can start your trial today with no credit card required and start building your website now. When you decide to sign up, use offer code Linus to get 10% off your first purchase. Thanks for watching this episode of Fast as Possible, guys. If you liked it, then touch me here. If you didn't like it, then you can touch me 
lower, I guess. Ooh, that's weird. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this over here on Tech Quickie. And hey, don't miss our other channels as well. We've got all kinds of great videos over on Channel Super Fun and over on Linus Tech Tips. So uh, check out the little eye in the corner to see a couple of featured videos right now.